Hey, Mr. Gore. How you doing? You can call me Norm, please. Norm, how you doing, man? I, 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 I listen to you, and I've been listening to you. And your 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 intro your your starting comments on the state of black and white America is spot on. It's a Thank shame you. that we as Americans know very little bit about our history. We what know very little about is, each other. We know very yeah, it, we it, know it, very it, little about amazing. each other, Rodney. Right. It's amazing how we embrace this concept of the salad, the mixed salad, and the the melting pot, and it's the farthest thing from the truth. What's happening to blacks in this country has historically happened to blacks in this country. It's never stopped. I can't think of one time in our history in this country since being brought over here where we have not been marginalized, where we have not been victimized. Absolutely. And it continues. And what we have today is the ability to see it because of social media and the 24-hour news cycle. But this is not new. We have Emmett Till's and, and those who go unmentioned all throughout our history. The police and, and white men have been killing young black men historically forever. This is not new. This is not a new epidemic. This is not a new plight. For those of those listeners who are blind or don't realize this, just pick up a history book. Just pick up a history book about the plight of black Americans in this country since we've been here, and you will see it. We are marginalized. There are no jobs in our communities. They put drugs and crime in our communities, and then they arrest us at astronomical rates. We are, we are profiled. It doesn't even matter now what economic bracket you're in. If you're black and you're riding in a nice car through the wrong neighborhood, the police are going to stop you. And ask you if this is your car. This is my car. I am a peace officer in Chicago. I am in a town right. I am in the part of Chicago right now called K Town. This is the the K numbered street, lettered streets between Pulaski and Cicero. Right now, I am in an unmarked car. I am a peace officer. I have a gun on. I am in plain clothes. I am subject to be stopped by the Chicago police, and I have been stopped by the Chicago police while conducting official state business. I am a state peace officer. And I'm Unbelievable. by the police on duty. As a Rodney, guy, can I ask so you to hold on? Rodney, hang on for me. I got to take a quick break. Rodney, I got to finish with you. Boy, do I have some questions for you. Now, Rodney, thank you for holding over with me. I appreciate it. No problem, Norm. Thank you. Do you have to actually identify yourself when police officers pull you over and you have to, like, show them your badge and they don't yeah, shoot you yeah, when you exactly. go reach them? I've, I've, I've had them actually pull me over. Now, I, I'll just go ahead and say that I'm a parole agent for the Illinois Department of Corrections. So I, I work in an unmarked car, but I do carry a gun, and I do have a badge and a vest and all of these things, but we're in unmarked cars. Now, our cars have certain plates. So they have certain plates, and we've got all the antennas and cages and everything that a police car has, but it is an unmarked car. So it's almost impossible to not know what I'm doing. But yet I've, I've you still pull get pulled over. My car. I've had to pull up to my car while I'm sitting in it and ask me who I am. Wow. And what I'm doing over here. And, so it, it, and, and it's only because of my skin color because my white counterparts have never experienced this and I've talked to them. But not just that, Norm. You know, I, I, I graduated high school in three years. I have a college degree. I served my country actively for five years in the United States Army. So I've walked the walk. I've done the talk and all this stuff. So for those who say it's a matter of effort, it's a matter of doing these, it doesn't matter I, at any point in time just because of my skin color, not because of my life resume, not because I'm a good, upstanding citizen, married to the same woman, taking care of my children, doing everything that every American man wants to do, every, every man in the world wants to do, I believe. It does not matter when it comes to my skin color, because at any point in time, I can be victimized, and that victimization can change my entire life. It's not something simple like just a ticket or something. I can be killed because of my skin color, because if I run into the wrong person, of another skin color, or even the same skin color with the wrong mentality, because of my skin color, I can die. Rodney, I have said for a long time that black people in America are marked for death, and yes. and you can't change it because you can't rub off your skin color, and that's you what that what marks it. you. Right, it's not a choice. It has been systematically bred into the fiber of this nation, and until we decide to address it openly and honestly like you're doing on this show, it will never go away. We're talking life and death, Norm. We're not even talking about the unemployment rate. We're not talking about the job disparity or the, the economic... Uh, in, uh, in economic injustice. Right. Economic injustice. Take a look at Detroit. Talking... I mean, look right. at we're Detroit. Talking you about... talk about economic injustice and white flight and concentrating all the black people in the poor parts of town. I mean, Detroit, Michigan is kind of a living example of that. 
Chicago is one of the most segregated cities in this country. So we, I deal with it. We cross over the train tracks, and you're in a totally different situation with totally different services, totally different. I mean, just, it's just a historical thing. You'd have to take a whole other show to even run down the historical facts that got us here, the laws that were passed by our government to marginalize and discriminate against black people, to put us in this situation. This is not because we're lazy. We built this country. We worked for almost 400 years with no wages. How could you ever call us lazy? And we were never compensated for any of it. But now when we go to look and knock for jobs and stuff, the jobs are all gone. I'm looking at factories right now on the west side of Chicago that have been shut down. There are no jobs in this area where I am. So the crime rate goes up when people don't have economic viability. That's in any culture. That's not just relative to black folks. That's anywhere in the world. When people cannot feed their families and provide the basic necessities, they become angry. They become despondent and discouraged. And that leads to violence. And, and that's what we have nowadays. Rodney, you know, I, I just want to say thank you for the time and thank well, you for thank your you. show, man. Rodney, thank, I, I, look, uh, Officer Rodney, I hope I'm never uh, – you're one of your parolees. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I do thank you for the passion and the really from the heart presentation that you made. When you say it, it just sounds so much more authentic than when I say it because of who we are. But Rodney, yeah, I'm, I, I'm living it, Nor. <laughs> well, that's it. And, and, you know, I'm not. And, right. and look, I've got white privilege and I appreciate my white privilege and I right. enjoy my white privilege. And I appreciate <laughs> your honesty. See, that, there, there's nothing wrong with saying that. But to not acknowledge it is the biggest sin. You, you may not even be able to do anything about it, but at least you're willing to be honest and talk about it. Well, Rodney, That's all we're saying. Let's just get to the dialogue, because without getting to the honest the dialogue, we can't, deter, we can't talk about changing it. Rodney, can we're I, willing to admit it exists. I hear you, but can I engage you in one, one more quick point? Yes. And that is this. Would you agree with me that prior to the 1960s, that there were tremendous barriers to black people voting in America? Would you agree? Oh, my goodness. Not just voting. We're get, you got to talk about everything else. Home ownership. Everything you gotta else. Talk right. about, you got to talk about the great, the, the great civilization and all of the welfare and social security, which blacks could not take a part of. You got to talk about a GI Bill with blacks coming home from the military that could not take a part of. All of these things that are in place were not put in place or easily accessible by black people. Rodney, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. But, but I want to just focus on voting because that's the pathway to power. So, oh, yeah. you know, th that's the reason why there were literacy tests and poll taxes. The exactly. reasons why there were barriers to voting is the white power structure in this nation has always known what you and I know, which yeah. is that voting is the pathway to power. Yeah. So, Rodney, would you agree with me now that since the 1960s, there's been a lot of success in stripping away those barriers oh they they started to begin to strip them away as quickly as we got them uh, but Under now the they're being restored now they're being yeah, restored with all the voter suppression stuff we're seeing exactly and what and that's what we're seeing now is the, is the erosion of things that folks fought and bled and died for which they never should have had to mind you that should have never been a spot in the american history amongst other things absolutely but now we're seeing them roll these things back and then and folks are acting as though the excuses that they're giving now are warranted, but, got, but I, I but still Rodney, believe, Norm, that's because we don't know our history. Here is why I, I give tough love to the black community in America, and I say yeah. exactly what you and I are talking about, which is, until the 1960s, there were many barriers for African Americans to vote in the United States. That's right. not That's not a matter of debate. It's a matter of historical right. obvious fact. Right. However, since the 1960s, we have been stripping away these barriers at great expense. And as you explained correctly, with many people dying and yeah. others shedding all kinds of blood. So yeah. now that we've created a pathway, we see the evildoers trying to immediately shut down that pathway exactly. with the new Jim Crow laws, the new barriers. Rodney, I've got to move along, but I really appreciate you being a part of the show. And you can call me anytime at one triple eight. Three two one six thousand and one.